everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, we're actually going to be planting some fig trees. And I'm going to come out, I think, with a lot of videos coming soon as we progress through this spring season here of me planting a lot of figs. Um, we're going to be planting somewhere around 40 to 50 varieties of figs this year. Um, the way I'm able to do that is I'm going to be planting them quite close. Um, I think three feet is a good spacing here in this climate. Um, if you guys live in a warmer place where your fig trees are guaranteed to survive the winter, you know, I would space them much further apart. But for me, um, a nice hedge of them is really what I want. Also, this little plot here that we're going to be planting in today is 16 feet long by 5 feet wide. And we're actually going to be spacing them 2 feet apart because this is really the experimental plot. I want to see what will survive here in this climate over the winter time because the end, the end goal with these varieties here you know even the ones we planted up against the wall up against the house and this really nice microclimate um, these varieties i'm hoping will survive in this location and become large trees and if they become large trees i'm going to have a much more significant crop instead as let me give you an example, this is my Pareto tree. Pareto is going to die back all the way to the ground and it's going to have to re sprout from the base. Whereas, if this tree were to survive the winter time, I mean, the production would be almost double, maybe even triple. So, for me, it's all about production in the long run. And I want to figure out what varieties will survive here in the ground. So, we've got this nice little strip, okay? We dug our hole. We figured out the site selection. If you guys want to know more about the site selection, I have plenty of videos on that, okay? We even have plenty of videos now talking about just how to plant these things. But I want to show you guys exactly how I'm doing this, why I'm doing this now. And I want to talk about the varieties that we're going to plant. So let me sit you guys down here for just a second. Maybe you guys can see this on the phone. I don't think you guys can. But... I have a nice little list here, if you guys can see this now. Along the south wall, this is a south facing wall is what I've dedicated this little strip here to. We're planting varieties like the Trace Displace, La Bourgeoisie, Black Madeira KK, Borges So Gris, Violet Sapor, San Baggio, Negra de Age, Figo Rocco, Nuriciola de Elba, La Magdaline, Col Noir, Figu Jean, Mazzanita, Rosa de Goni, and Dal Oso. And there's a few more that if I really wanted to, I could put them here. Because I can have up to, in this spacing here and in this plot, because it's 16 feet long, I can have up to 18 trees in here uh, doing two different rows. So those are going to be the really experimental trees that I think may have some potential here. Some potential to either ripen early or be rain resistant. Uh, that's what I'm looking for in my climate with an in-ground tree, is that I want my trees either to be, I want them both to be early and rain resistant because it doesn't matter how early it is, it's gonna get hit with that rain. Most of these trees in my area, if I'm lucky, will ripen sometime around mid-August, but the earliest ones on average are gonna ripen September 1st and really from September 15th onwards we get that rain so they must be rain resistant without a doubt that's the number one criteria they also have to be early because if they're not early they're not going to ripen in time and then the third characteristic that I'm really importantly looking forward or looking for is that they have to be hardy so that's really what this whole plot is it's really an experimental just place to plant them and we'll, we'll have them here for a year or two in this location. Maybe we'll take some out. Maybe we'll add some other ones in. And we'll see what survives, how well it does. Some of these are a bit of a long shot, I'm not going to lie. Which is why I didn't want to put them in a more permanent place. And that's why I'm dedicating this whole area for this purpose. So out of the 50 varieties that I'm going to plant this year, you know, I'm only going to dedicate somewhere around 30 of them to be varieties or trees that I think have a really, really good chance of surviving the winter. Meaning that they are gonna be hardy, but they're also rain resistant, and they're also going to be early. And that's where these trees are gonna come in, on this side of the house. We've already got some of them planted, Little Ruby, 
Rondé Bordeaux. Uh, this is Colonel Littman's. So we're gonna have them all up against the house, three foot spacing. Also a secondary row here in between the air conditioning units and this raised bed. This raised bed will be taken out. We'll leave the soil here because that soil is gonna act as a thermal mass. It's gonna create a nice little mound. And then on the left side of the raised bed is gonna be another row, three feet spacing of these fig trees. We've also got some more that's gonna get planted on the front of the house, but really not that many there because that's not really the best location. Um, you know, this is a west facing exposure here on this side of the house. Um, gets a lot of heat and a lot of sun, but it's not really the most amount of sun. The most amount of sun and probably the most amount of heat is going to be this south facing exposure. And that's why I've dedicated some of these trees against the house. Using the house, man, is just such a huge benefit. But we've already talked about site selection. I don't want to get too bogged down into that. Uh, maybe we can talk about it as I plant this. But I want to show you guys the whole process. This is the Dal Oso tree that I have that comes from Belfiore Nursery in Italy. Um, well, originally it came from Belfiore Nursery in Italy. So this guy here, we have no idea on the hardiness, but I do know that it's quite rain resistant. I've definitely proven that last year with this tree. And it's certainly somewhere between mid-season and early. So it's somewhere in the early scale here. Not entirely sure. I know it's a good fig. I enjoy it. So all that little requirements there, I think is going to make this one a potential candidate. Now, is it going to survive the winter? I don't know. But the whole reason why I'm putting this tree in the ground now is that this one is a large tree. This was in a 10 gallon size pot. We do have some trees that are dormant. Now they must be dormant because I'm doing this so early in the season, right? It's only March 15th. You can see some pots here. These are much smaller and these guys are also going to go on the ground, but these are dormant. So I don't have a problem planting these as well. You can see all these little pots, all these little trees. They're gonna go in the ground as soon as I can get them in, maybe even sometime today. But if I have a rooted cutting that I'm gonna plant in the ground, which plenty of them will be this year, rooted cuttings, they're not dormant, then I'm gonna to wanna to wait because I want them to get to a large size. But also when I plant them, I want the soil to be warm. And sometime around mid-May, really two months from now, is really when I'm gonna get those trees in the ground. I know that seems a bit far away and this tree actually planting it out today may seem a bit early, but this is a good time to uncover your trees. We're halfway through March, the forecast looks great. The chances of us getting below 17 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty slim. Even 20 degrees Fahrenheit is a bit slim which is why we've got the potted figs here on the patio. And this is a bit of a test to see exactly how they're gonna do, if they're gonna wake up too early. We did a video on that, check that out if you guys are interested. But the point is the, the temperatures here are really not looking um, too bad. So because of that, I'm willing to plant some dormant trees. Just because they're, they're dormant, that's gonna mean that they're gonna survive, right? I mean, I'm sure I'm gonna get this question. This is why I'm kind of going into all these details here because I know some of you guys are gonna ask this stuff. You know, the tree must be dormant. If you're planting it this early, the tree must be dormant. Um, also, the tree is not gonna take damage. It's a dormant tree. It's not gonna wake up. It's gonna wake up probably sometime in early May when the last frost has actually passed. So you're not really chancing it saying that, oh, this tree is gonna wake up. We're gonna have some problems. You know, this is actually a pretty decent time to plant it. This tree is really not gonna take damage. Um, I would be shocked. Even if the temperatures dip down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, if that tree took some damage, then well, it probably doesn't belong there anyway. You know what I mean? So anyway, I hope that kind of clears up all the questions that I'm gonna get with this one. But if you're still unclear of why I'm doing this or some particular weird thing, you know, use some common sense, but you can obviously ask that down below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. Um, but let me, let me plant this thing and show you guys how I'm gonna do this, all right? So I'm gonna put you guys down somewhere, see if I can get you guys a decent angle. 
You know what? Let me show you guys the hole first. And this is the tree. It's dallow, so it's quite vigorous. We didn't mention that. It's a vigorous variety. I know it's vigorous. Um, and because it's so vigorous, we're gonna put the more vigorous ones in the back, right? Because this is gonna get, the further back we go, the sun rises, or the sun's over here for most of the day. So it's coming in this direction towards us. We want the more vigorous trees, if known, in the back. So that's why I'm putting the dallow so, so far back rather than up in the front. See what I'm saying? Uh, also, here's the hole. We didn't really go too nuts with this hole. I don't do that for any tree. I just get a, a hole that's that's big enough so I can put it in there and cover it up with dirt. Now, the fig tree, what's important here is that when we put this in here, sorry guys, it's a bit heavy, is that you can see now, we've got all this excess dirt. Also, if I get real low, you're gonna see that the top of the root ball is above grade. Now I have learned through this winter, through last winter, that I can plant my fig trees above grade. Um, and here's why it's a benefit, okay? Let me take you guys on a little trip here. Now I did have a hardy Chicago, which is one of the hardiest varieties that exists. I was able to overwinter it in this location here. We dug it up because we planted these stone fruits here. But those were planted, that was planted here and it survived this winter with no damage actually, zero damage. The first winter it survived here with no damage and the root ball was about four inches above grade. Now how did we get it to survive? Well, we covered the base. Also we know with the potted trees the potted fig trees will not take damage unless temperatures dip below 17 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's at the root zone. So if the roots are staying above 17 degrees Fahrenheit, at the soil level, when they're planted, we should be okay. And if I put down enough layers of mulch, I can guarantee that even when it's two degrees Fahrenheit out here, most years, we're not gonna dip below 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I was playing around with just how high I could plant them. Here we have a tree called White Marseille. It's actually a decently hardy tree, not the hardiest compared to hardy Chicago. But you can see this tree actually has survived the winter time. I pruned out all the growth that was dead, but this branch here is certainly alive and that branch is certainly alive. And how did I plant this? Well about eight to 10 inches of the root ball on this particular tree is above grade. We covered it with soil, we put rocks on top. Of course, it's in this raised bed. The raised bed is a foot, uh, a foot tall. And then I'm gonna take it even a step further here. And I'm in zone seven, okay? People have been telling me my whole fig career to plant these fig trees deep because they just won't survive. Well, here's another tree. This is Taramo Unknown. Quite a hardy variety found in Maryland, zone seven. So it's found in my zone, it's hardy to my zone. And you can see this, this raised bed is the same height, it's a foot tall. What we did is we covered it with straw. But the difference here is that we put this tree on the ground. The entire root ball when we planted this last spring is above grade. Now the problem here is that the entire top of this tree is dead. But if I come in here, I mean, this is all dead, right? So I've done the scratch test on this, but if I come in at the base, this is alive. So that means the roots stayed intact, stayed alive, didn't really dip below 17 degrees Fahrenheit. And maybe they did for a night. You know, I don't know just how low some of these varieties can go. I certainly know that at 17 degrees Fahrenheit, most of the varieties that are not very hardy will start to take damage. So the point I'm trying to make here is that we are actually planting this maybe even a bit too low. And that I may want to take this out of here, add some more dirt below it, and then cover this whole thing up. What I certainly want to do is cover some of this wood here, some of these buds. By covering these buds, we're guaranteeing that, let's say the tree dies back, 
we're gonna at least protect this portion of the tree and it can re-sprout from here, give it some time to become a massive tree and then every year from that point on, it'll get, you know, it'll have no problem re-sprouting from the base. But what we need to do is that if we're gonna plant this a bit higher, is that we need to guarantee every single winter that we're coming in here with straw. I'm talking about tons of straw. Look how much straw is just right here. And we're covering the root ball of these trees. If I don't do that, I have a feeling that a lot of you guys are right, that indeed, if we plant them too high, we don't plant them deep, that they will die. So it's really all in the mulch. We're gonna cover every single one of them at first with rocks. You can see here, we're gonna cover them with rocks, just like I've got with all the other trees. We've got little pebbles here, we've got larger rocks. I'm gonna see if I can get some boulders on the property. And that's gonna really create some nice thermal mass. The fact that we're also on this south facing slope that's sloping downwards, we have pretty good drainage. Although our soil is very dense, clay holds lots of water. You know, these are the things that are really, really important that I wanted to tell you guys about in this video. So, anyway, I think that's sort of it. That's really what I wanted to get to. Um, it's really just about protecting this base. And if for whatever reason, the tree doesn't survive here, then it probably wasn't a tree that I wanted anyway. Right? Survival of the fittest. So I'm excited to plant these guys out and I'm excited to show you guys more as we progress through the spring. Two months from now, we're gonna be planting a whole bunch of them out. Hopefully I'll be able to document the entire process. I'm gonna get myself a GoPro. In fact, it just showed up today in the mail and I'll be able to put that on my head and show you guys just exactly the whole step-by-step -step process, me digging this whole thing out and then me covering the whole thing. You know, if you guys wanna see it, you know, let's just show it to you guys right now. We'll see if I can get you guys a pretty decent view here. We good on battery life? We're good on battery life. Let me show you guys here. We'll set you guys up. Okay, so I'm gonna take this root ball out and I'm gonna plant him just a tad higher, I think. Now, you know what? We didn't really discuss why planting them higher. What, are the, what are even are the benefits to that? Well, the benefits are that the tree is gonna have access to more heat. That's during the season, not during the winter time. This provides zero winter protection. What this does do is make the, the plants, the fig tree, supercharged because we're in such a warm microclimate on this particular area of my yard, and also because we're planting them up higher, we're actually gonna be mimicking a container. This tree is gonna act as if it was partially buried in the ground. So if we took a container, I've done a video on that, where you can bury the bottom four, two inches, maybe even six inches of the of the container. Now what is that going to do? Well by burying it, burying a container, you're going to get all kinds of roots coming out of the container, out of the holes in the container, and it's going to root itself into the ground. And now it has access to all this extra nutrients, all this extra water. You don't even have to water them for the most part. My first year, I mistakenly did, and I actually overwatered them. And that's when I realized that too much water on these fig trees is actually a horrible idea, especially in terms of fruit quality. My fruit quality suffered that year. Even on trees that were much older and much mature, more mature than they should have been. And I shouldn't have really had that problem. But it was all because of that water. So here's what we're doing. We're literally just covering all sides of this root ball. That's all there is to it here. Um, and why am I covering all sides? Because I don't want any of the roots exposed, okay? We've got plenty of clay here. 
this stuff will compact real nicely for me. Now, I also kind of want to loosen this up. Some other amendments we may want to think about. Well, you could do many amendments. You could do diatomaceous earth. I would, it's, I would suggest getting a soils test and figuring out what deficiencies you have in your soil. And if you have any deficiencies, come in here with that particular nutrient. I would recommend in large quantities though, for fig trees, diatomaceous earth. I think boron is quite pretty important. If you don't have boron, that will really help them fruit. Also, what's really important is magnesium, calcium, and potassium. So that's why a lot of guys add in lime to their container figs. A lot of the old timers used to always add lime. And you know what? Uh, here's a rock. We found a rock. We're gonna keep that rock on the, on the base here and add that in as some more protection. And see how I'm covering up all the sides? And now everything I add is to the top because we're covering the trunk. This is not a big deal with fig trees because fig trees, when you cover their trunks, they send out roots in this location. This isn't something that's gonna happen where you're gonna strangle the tree or kill the tree because you've covered up, you've covered up the trunk. It's just not gonna happen. It may happen over the entirety of the winter time. I would not recommend, when we put down the straw, I would not recommend covering the entire tree with straw. Straw holds too much water throughout the winter time and that will certainly rot the, rot the uh, trunk. Wood chips, probably not. Leaves will break down quick enough to where that doesn't happen. But uh, straw, certainly, it lasts a long time. It holds a lot of moisture. You will kill your fig tree back down to the base by putting down too much straw. So that's really it. We've covered up basically where I pointed out on the tree with soil. And that way we have a higher up planting, more access to more heat. We can even pat this down if we want. And I shit you not, this tree is gonna go freaking nuts. Sorry for the language. But because of all this heat, guys, it's gonna go berserk. And I will put down those amendments I mentioned later in the season when I do all the pots, when I feed all my pots, I'll do the same thing to the figs. I wanna certainly put down diatomaceous earth this year. And I do wanna put down lots of lime. Um, that potassium, as well as the magnesium, really helps these fig trees out. Um, limestone, where a lot of these fig trees are planted. Same thing with grapes, they kind of act in a similar way, is that that limestone in the soil, you know, places like Italy or places where there's just tons of limestone underneath the soil, you just get such a better quality fruit. Um, it really does have to do with the nutrients, but also the water capacity, that it doesn't get too wet, it doesn't get too dry. So it's the same thing with the fig. We want to have nice limestone soil if we can. Obviously, we can't do that here, right? I can't add in lime five feet under the ground, but we can add some to the top and add in those nutrients that are so good for the fig. All right, guys, that is the video. I hope you all enjoyed this one. I did. I uh, enjoyed talking about all this and hashing it out with you. We're going to come in here again. And like I said, we're going to come in here and plant 40 or so fig trees this year so you know stay tuned for that if you guys enjoyed this one please let me know give this one a like share this one um, if you know somebody who's interested in figs send this one to their email share this one on your facebook page um, you know comment down below all that's really going to help me out and this video i think was so informative for people interested in doing this uh, whether they're in a warmer zone or a cold zone you know, I think this can really help out a lot of people. So, um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the new website as well. We have a new website, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. We have a whole blog, a whole different, bunch of different blog posts there. Uh, that's totally different content than the videos. Also, the stuff on social media is very different. You know, facebook.com slash rossratty. It's the same tag as the YouTube channel. And uh, I hope to see you all there. Catch you for tomorrow's video. Take care.